the land of the Cossacks, the land of liberty, freedom and courage. It is reminiscent of the past glories of Ukraine's ancestors. A wild field flanking the Samara River, the world's only nine-domed church, which was built without a single iron nail, and a unique Cossack-era hospital. All of this on unexplored Ukraine, Prisamaria. A mild climate, unique nature, minerals and mineral water springs – all this can only be seen here. These are the both nature and our ancestors have left their marks here. This is the Kazakh land on the banks of the Samara River, where you can find unique spiritual sanctuaries and scenic landscapes. This is the Prisamaria region in the Dnipropetrovsk oblast. You can get here traveling 40 minutes down the Dnipro to Novomoskovsk. All the beauty along the ride is in full view. This place was once named Samar, later Novoselitsa, and since the early 19th century by its present name. This year we celebrated 440 years of Novomoskovsk. The thing is that many historians believe that the founding date of Novomoskovsk is 1576. That is the year when the town of Samar and the river Samara was mentioned. The town is mentioned in the charter of the Polish king Stefan Batory. But it must be said that these days Dnipropetrovsk archaeologists reject the idea that a town on Samara was located on the site of modern Novomoskovsk. It is mentioned as Samarchik or Novoselitsya in old documents of the 18th century. The exact date of the founding of Samarchik Novoselitsya has still not been determined. But the search continues. So I think that in the future the secret will be unraveled. There was a time when these lands were occupied by Slavic tribes who descended by the stream of the Dnipro. From the middle of the 18th century, after the Mongol invasion and the fall of Kievan Rus, the whole area came under the possession of Polish-Lithuanian theodore lords. The woods teemed with wildlife and rivers were full of fish. Herds of wild horses lived in meadows around Samara. It was a plain. The grass here was so high that people on horseback were not visible, so special path had to be made. It was impossible to see if an army was coming through. It is said that there were many deer and wild boars. The game was being taken to Kyiv. All this meant that the land was worth settling. At the end of the 15th century, beginning with the existence of free Cossacks, beyond the rapids of the Dnipro, the Zaporizhian siege, life once again returned to these lands. The earliest mentions tell that the Cossacks built temporary housing on the Samara River for curing wild game and fish and logging forest wood. But later the river itself became a kind of boundary between the lands of the Crimean Khanate and the lands of the Zaporizhian Cossacks. These first Cossack settlements are almost 400 years old, according to the charter of Stefan Batory, who was the king of the Commonwealth at the time. The Cossacks received the city of Samar, the Samar crossing and vast tracts of land of Prisamaria. The history of Novomoskovshina is impossible to separate from the Cossacks. It was a center of Zaporizhian Cossacks. The fact that the Samara Palanka was there is a testimony to that. The largest group of Zaporizhian Cossack troops had 45 Cossack huts, which were located not only in Novomoskovsk, but also on the outskirts of the settlement. There was a Kushovka hut in Samarchik itself, which was a subdivision of the Samara Palanka. 
На острове меж рекою Самарой и ее рукавом Самарчук. And like many other defensive structures of the time, it had underground facilities, warehouses, and of course secret passages. In 1602, by the order of Zaporizhia, the fortress became the Samara Mykolaevsky Monastery. The Samara Monastery was not only a spiritual center, it was also a social center. Old Cossacks lived the rest of their lives there, Cossacks wounded in battles were treated there, and the children of dead Cossacks, or those who wanted their children to be educated on the principles of the Cossacks, were taught there. This spiritual sanctuary of the Cossacks is more than 400 years old. The ancient monastery walls hold many mysteries. The monastery was rebuilt many times, four, some say three, underground passages led from the monastery. One led to the temple of Novomoskovsk, which was built without a single nail. That is also a Cossack church, which was built on Cossacks' money. Another tunnel was under Samarchuk and led into a field, then to the city of Orlovshina, and then directly to Salt Lake, where Cossacks were treated. The third passage allegedly led to Novomoskovsk, though nobody knows exactly where it led to. Today all of these passages are in a state of disrepair and were closed and walled to prevent anyone from trying to go down into them. The monastery survived over many years from fires, destruction and the plague, but it was always rebuilt again and again. It is said that the monastery and all of Presamaria is protected by the miraculous Samara icon of the Mother of God. И неизвестно, где находится, это есть в описании самарской иконы. The main sacred object of the Samara monastery is the Samara icon of the Mother of God. The original icon is lost. It is said that during a crusade to Nicopol, the icon was lost in a sandstorm. What exactly caused the loss is still not clear. Whether it was a human factor or God's favor remains unknown. Initially, the Samara Mother of God icon was brought from a Cossack military campaign to the east. A lot of miracles happened when people prayed to the icon. Every year this icon was taken throughout the diocese. It healed sick people. There was a miracle of a cholera epidemic receding after praying to this icon. It is one of the revered sacred objects of local residents at the time. After a long lull, church songs could be heard once again in the Samara monastery. Monastic brethren revived the Kazakh shrine, restored temples and built a new bell tower. And just as in glorious Kazakh times, the monastery bell convened the faithful to the service of God. To learn more about the history of Prisamaria, you can visit the Novomoskovsk Historical Museum of Petro Kolnyshevsky, the last ataman of the Zaporizhian siege. The building itself was erected in 1901. This building is an example of a classic city building of the late 19th, early 20th century. Unfortunately, few such buildings remain in our city, as most of them were destroyed in the Second World War during the occupation. The museum building has miraculously survived. After the war it remained empty for a long time. 
The collection of the museum has five Poltovtsyan idols, ancient weapons, everyday objects like pottery and embroidery, Cossack sabers, the history of the first Cossack monastery and stories about people who have done a lot for Prisamaria. Among them is priest Kirillo Tarlovsky, known as the Wild Priest. He is a man with an interesting fate, who chanced upon those lands by accident. He became the chief priest of the Samara Church. Це був відомий чоловік, який багато зробив для нашого міста. У 1790-х роках він побудував Свято-Миколаївський храм. He was known as a man who did a great deal for our city. In the 1790s, he built the St. Nicholas Church in the Samara Monastery. It was one of the first stone churches in Prasamaria. That man took care not only of the monastery, but also of many villages of Novoselca. They were settled thanks to Kirillo Tarlovsky. He was the colonizer of our region, who attracted farmers and gave them land and a chance to survive. The Holy Trinity Cathedral is considered one of the sacred places of this region. It is the only one in the world crossing square cathedral with nine domes. It is rightly called the Cossack Cathedral, because this unique wooden church was built without a single iron nail and on the money of the Cossack community. What is interesting is that this year a unique document has been found in the archives of the Dnipropetrovsk Regional Museum, the charter on the building of the St. Trinity Cathedral. It mentions the name of Petro Kalnyshevsky, the last ottoman of the Zaporizhia siege. Petro Kalnyshevsky insisted on the construction of a wooden church in Novomoskovsk at the time. We can say for certain that our most famous temple was erected at the expense and under the patronage of Petro Kalnyshevsky. Construction of the church was completed in 1778. The uniqueness of the architectural idea is in the location of the nine domes. Although only eight domes can be seen from any point of view, there are no supports both inside and outside. The building of the cathedral stands on a high brick foundation. Walls pass directly into the domes. They are interconnected in such a way that each of them supports the neighboring ones, creating harmony and beauty on all sides. The walls and domes are made of thick oak and pine logs, 40-45 cm in diameter, without the use of iron nails. The temple is incredibly beautiful inside, as if the church was created for holidays. The ceiling with nine domed towers is in the Great Hall. The walls are decorated with tall windows. On the west side of the entrance is a balcony with a cast iron gate for the choir. The altar is on the east. The bell tower and the clock were built later. The cathedral was on the verge of destruction several times, but it survived to these days. Як саме вдалося уникнути руйнування собору, це дійсно диво. Мушу сказати, що, можливо, собор був вигідним. Там завжди був ринок, а в 30-ті роки там просто зробили сховище зерна. Його перетворили на стрілку. How it was possible to avoid the destruction of the cathedral is truly a miracle. Maybe it was beneficial. There was always market there. In the 30s it was turned into a warehouse. But it is also known that during that period a unique carved iconostasis of the 16th century was stolen. Just imagine, the icons of the iconostasis were older than the cathedral itself. The iconostasis was cut into pieces and burned in the local steam bath. It was the period of the decline of faith, when a huge number of religious monuments and historical architectural monuments were destroyed. Today the Holy Trinity Cathedral in Novomoskovsk, Dnipropetrovsk region is recognized as the pearl of wooden monumental architecture and is in the register of 100 of the greatest monuments of wooden architecture in the world. 
in Brisamaria, the free and freedom-loving Cossack land, even the nature is unique. Here you can see the famous flute plain forests, where white oaks grow. The beautiful Samara River, with its steep banks, stretches almost 311 kilometers from east to west, turning sharply in the south and skirting Novomoskovsk. The river is very unique. It starts in the steeps and then flows through a valley, where it made a peninsula on which a forest grew. The river is very clean and wide. It expanded down on the Dnipro itself. There were thousands of hectares of flooded meadows with a lot of fish. And most importantly, it provided drinking water for local villagers, and it created a water balance for the steeped area. Here, on the bank of the glorious Samara River, we will try to cook kulish, which is a traditional Cossack meal. A necessary condition is to cook on a fire in the open air. Since only Cossacks were in the siege, kulish is considered a man's dish, and only Cossacks know its recipe. The fire is already burning. Finely cut lard is thrown into the pot, which is then hung over the fire. After the lard is slightly roasted, diced onions are added, followed by water and spices. Then it all must boil. After 15 minutes, millet is added. Kulish is a traditional Ukrainian meal, and millet has long been known in Ukraine. About 1, 1.5 kilograms of millet are needed for the 10-liter pot. To make kulish tastier, stewed meat and butter are added, then salted. True kulish must be as thick as sour cream in its consistency. Then it is cooked for another 15-20 minutes. The wonderful aroma leaves nobody indifferent. Try it, you will not regret it. Four centuries ago, not far from Novomoskovsk, the Cossacks founded the oldest Cossack settlement – Orlivkut. Now it is known as Orlovshina village, that was the place of the famous crossing, which was used by merchant caravans. But the place is known not only for the crossing. There are mineral water sources nearby, which are now used in sanatoriums, further along in the Salt Lake. The healing water and mud helped Kazakhs cure many ailments. The unique healing water is used in our time as well. Nature has generously endowed this place with a thick scent of pine forest, the Samara River and sources of natural mineral waters. By the way, there are two of them here, and they have different medical properties. One source provides drinking water, and the other – water for external use. We have combined two sources of mineral water. The phenomenon in itself is considered unique. I will start with drinking water. The chloride sodium water contains many elements, such as iodine, bromine, selenium, magnesium, zinc and copper. Such water helps restore liver cells and treat metabolic disorders. The second source is the iodine bromine brine. It occurs less frequently in nature. It is applied externally. It has a soothing, anti-inflammatory effect because of the iodine. It normalizes the nervous system and improves skin condition. We invite everyone to come to us to improve their health or simply as a preventive measure. The sanatorium is located in a picturesque location on the banks of the Samara. No wonder it is called the Pearl of Presamaria, a true paradise of nature. You can relax and improve your health here. This is the place to go to relax, explore and enjoy. After you walk along the places the Cossacks did and see their way of life, you begin to understand what Ukraine is about. Ukraine is beautiful and unexplored. Everyone can discover 
discover it for themselves and for the rest of the world.